All right. We call this kinematics. Why does it always do this every time I want to start writing? We call this kinematics part two. Dealing with acceleration. All right, so um, let's uh, let's make up an example, okay? A car is at rest and accelerates to um, I'm going to say five meters per second over a time period. of 10 seconds, find the distance it covered while accelerating. Okay. So let's, um, I think the easiest way to understand what we're dealing with here is to actually graph out what this would, uh, what this would look like. So let's do that. So we'll start with a displacement time graph. Okay, so this is, um, you know, this is position. I should say it's a position time graph, right? It's not really displacement. Technically, displacement is the change in position. But often you just hear displacement time graph. So anyway, um, if we were to look at this, you would get a smooth curve going like this. Okay, so here's the question. If I look at this, how does this graph here tell me really anything about the distance covered, right? I don't know where it's going to end up, right? I just know that its velocity constantly changes, and by the time I get here, the velocity will be 5 meters per second. That's all I really know. And we can actually, like, put in what 5 meters per second would look like. So what do I call a line like this that just touches and has the same slope as that curve? What do we call that? Right, so that's a tangent line. So the slope of the tangent here, right, the slope of this tangent, which is delta S over delta T, will be our velocity at this point in time. So we call that the instantaneous velocity at that moment in time. Any time before this, the instantaneous velocity is less, right? In fact, the instantaneous velocity is zero right at the start. So instantaneous velocity V is the tangent at that moment in time. So on its own here right now with the just the information we have, directly this isn't really all that useful. Okay? So in order to make it useful, we're gonna draw um, the velocity time version of this motion, right? And so what that would look like is you would have a constantly changing velocity, right? And let's put in our values here. Okay, so our velocity starts at 0 and increases to 5 over a time of 10 seconds, okay? Now let's just look at some of the stuff that we, um, that we know, right? We know this. Um, Sorry, you know this. Okay, so we're basically saying rise over run or the slope of your distance time graph or your position time graph, sorry, is your velocity. And we also know if we rearrange this that um, this would be true, right? What we're basically saying here is that, you know, just uh, let's just take one step back and just as an aside say this. Here's a velocity time graph of constant motion, right? Here's something that keeps the same velocity. So it keeps the same velocity of 2 meters per second uh, for 10 seconds, okay? Well, how far did something go if it went 2 meters per second for 10 seconds? 20 meters. So if you look, um, the area under the velocity time graph gives you distance, right? The area under a velocity time graph gives you the distance that it went, uh, or displacement, I guess. Okay, um, 
So we want to make note of that, if we haven't already. Area under a VT graph is distance covered or displacement. Okay. Okay. So if it's true then that the area under a velocity time graph is displacement, then this is a velocity time graph. The area under here should be our displacement. And this is how we're going to work out calculating that. Okay? We have not done this already. Now we call the initial velocity u. So in this particular graph, u equals zero, right? V is what we call our final velocity, and that equals five. So we're going to go five, and we're going to go zero. Okay? And what we're going to say is, okay, what if I take 5 plus 0 divided by 2? If I do that, I get this line here, right? Which is essentially half of this rectangle, right? Are you with me? This white line underneath it, this area under here, makes half of that rectangle, okay? So if I take that and I multiply by 10, I will get exactly half of this rectangle, which is exactly the same as the area bounded by or found underneath this, uh, this slope, right? So let's just switch to yellow here. So this area here, right, is exactly equal in area to the white area I've put vertical lines on, right? They're both half of this rectangle, okay? Does that make sense? So what we've essentially done here is we've said this. Uh, v, the final, plus u, the initial, divided by 2 times the time that this happened for should give us the distance covered by the object, right? So that's the area under this line. So what we're doing is we're averaging our velocity, and the average velocity times the time gives you the same distance covered as that of the accelerating object for the same given time. So this is a brand new formula that can be quite useful for you. Okay, so in the case with the data that we've we've had here, right, put in the numbers that were, were given here, S is going to be V plus U, so 5 plus 0 divided by 2, times t, oops, which was 10 seconds, and we get 25 meters, okay? So it covers 25 meters. Um, and this will even work, it will also work if you had an initial velocity to begin with. It doesn't have to start from zero, okay? And it also works, actually, for um, objects that are slowing down. So let's see another scenario where we could use this, okay? So maybe you have an object doing something like this, okay? Um, make this a velocity time graph. Okay, and now the area that we're interested in is this under here. Okay. So let me get what I want. All right, so we have this. Right. What we're actually looking for now, okay, is, um, is this area. Okay. And so we have now uh, this being our V value. What's going on here? Something weird. Oh, switch my line style. <laughs> Where this is now our V, right? And this is now our U. Okay, and so we are going to have v plus u over 2. So we're going to get this area right under here, which you can see, right, makes half of this area, whereas this stays the same as it always was. It's underneath the line, so we don't really have to change what we're doing here. And you'll actually get the correct value. Okay, so it's going to work no matter... Um, no matter what the scenario is, if you have an initial and a final velocity and a time that it happened over, you can always find the distance covered. Okay? Okay, let's look at one more uh, just before we move on to um, the last two kind of formulas that we're going to pull apart here. Um, let's actually talk about uh, this guy for a second. So, you have this, right? 
and if you think about it, um, well, you could write it like this, couldn't you? I'm just going to drop that delta off there, okay? So we know it's a time period. It's not an instant in time. We know it's a time period. Um, we could say this is true, right? So, you know, if I accelerate it 2 meters per second squared for, you know, 4 seconds, my velocity will change by 8 meters per second, right? That's, that's kind of what we're saying there. But this actually represents something, doesn't it? This represents V minus U equals AT. So a little useful formula um, that you might find is to say, if I want to know my final velocity and I have an initial velocity, I could have this formula, right, sorted out from there. Okay, so my final velocity, it's not a delta anymore, my final velocity is whatever I was doing initially plus the change in velocity that I had. Okay? So this is essentially just rearranging your acceleration formula into a different form, right? Expanding it basically and looking at what all the parts actually represent. All right, so... Um, so that's good to know. Let's uh, let's set ourselves up with another question here, and uh, and see if we can't uh, derive something else from that information. Okay. Um, so, how much distance is covered when a car initially Ten meters per second accelerates four meters per second squared while passing on the highway if the pass takes. Five seconds. I don't know. Maybe that's a really fast pass. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna draw a picture of this, and then we're gonna use that picture to um, derive us something. And by the way, just because it was mentioned, you could solve this right now without doing any other deriving of formulas. You would use this to find final velocity, and then you'd use our new formula that we just derived up here to solve for the distance. But that's a two-step process, right? And uh, there is a, sh a shortened way to do it once you, uh, once you go through the derivation of that. Okay, so, so what I want to do is I want to look at what this is going to look like in terms of a velocity time graph. Okay. So you're already at some initial velocity, right? And your velocity will increase to some other velocity uh, over here. We don't know what that is right now, but we do know that the area underneath here, okay, is going to be the distance that was covered during the acceleration. Okay, so we want to get this area under here. And the way to do that is, um, is to realize that this is actually two geometric shapes that we are capable of dealing with, right? Um, square and a triangle, or sorry, a rectangle and a triangle. Um, said, if you knew V, if you knew V, you'd be fine. You could solve this straight away, but you don't, okay? So we're going to label these V and A, <laughs> A and B, <laughs> okay? So here's your initial velocity, here's your final velocity. And in order to get your displacement, we said that you need the area under this, so area under your BT graph. How you're going to get that is you're essentially going to add two things together. You're going to add the area of A to the area of B. Okay. Um, so finding A is fairly easy. Um, so what we'll say is displacement covered, distance covered for area A is simply going to be equal to whatever it would be if we were to just keep the same velocity the whole time multiplying that by time. So we know this is 5 seconds, and we know that this was 4 meters per second. 
Okay, uh, we're still deriving, but we'll come back and use those later. So we'll say that SA then is just going to be U times T. Okay, so we'll put that aside. Sorry, it should be 10 meters per second. Let's just fix that. There, that's better. Okay. Um, and then, okay, um, let's just write down what we need to do here. So we must find area A plus B. Okay. Um, okay, so now let's tackle this B part here, right? Um, so if we want to figure out the height of this triangle in B, we would probably use B minus U, right? V minus U should give us the height of this thing. Am I right? So V minus U is the height. T is, is, is the base. So we want one half of that. So we should say then that the distance covered in part B here should be equal to um, one half because it's a triangle base times height or height times base V minus U times T okay so that should be finding the area of B, 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 A and B we want A plus B so we say S at all of our S together should be equal to ut plus one half v minus u times t. This isn't exactly helpful at this point though, because we still don't know what v is. But is there something we can do with this to help ourselves out? Kind of, right? If you remember, just recall this, we just said delta v is equal to a times t. Well, delta V is final minus initial, V minus U equals AT, right? V minus U is equal to AT. Well, there's a V minus U over here, so we could substitute in AT for that. So that's what we'll do. UT plus one half AT T, or when we're finally done, total distance covered ut plus one half a t squared okay so now um now this is your new this is your new friend okay put this in your toolbox for when you need it all right so your toolbox is getting nice and full of formulas that you can use at the appropriate time and hopefully you actually even understand it um so what do we say here so we said s the distance covered while accelerating in this situation was, like I said, 10 meters per second. We said that the pass took 5 seconds. We said that the acceleration was 4 meters per second squared. And our 5 seconds comes back into the mix. And then we do some solving. So what do we got here? We've got 50. Uh, 100. Is that 50? That works out to 52, doesn't it? 25 times 4 is 100 times a half is 50. Okay, so we should end up with, and we'll just check our units in a second here. It should work out to be a meter, right? So there's... I don't know how... I don't know why that happened. That's just totally by accident. Okay, so seconds should cancel out here. Seconds negative two seconds squared, they should cancel out there. Only unit left is meters, and we're adding, so it just stays meters, and yay, everything works. I think that we're happy. Cool. Okay, while we're at it, we might as well crush out our last kinematics formula that we need. And again, I think we'll start with um, an example that we can solve with it. Um, so, a car at, on your sheet it could be whatever you want. It could be like a salmon, I don't care. A car at two, a salmon at two meters per second uh, accelerates at 
two meters per second squared. Uh, four thirty meters. Find its final velocity. Well, this one at this point is not going to be solvable. So we're going to have to do some we're going to have to do some deriving here. Okay. Um, so I'm going to change to blue. So let's recall a couple of things that we're going to need here. Acceleration is delta v, so v minus u over some period of time, right? And we also know this because we just learned it. V equals u plus at. And so here we go. We're going to start with this guy, and we're going to do some things to it. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to square both sides of it. Okay? Squared up. So hopefully you guys know how to square something that looks like this. Uh, it's not just square this and square this, right? You have to use your, uh, you know, basically we're saying this. Okay. So that will end up giving you this at the end of the day. Okay, square the first, two times the first times the second, square the second. Okay, and then that becomes this. Just rearranging how we're writing this. Okay, so now we're going to look at this, just strictly this part over here. And what we're going to do is we are going to pull 2a out of here, right? There's an a here and an a here. There's a 2 here. There's no 2 here, but we can still deal with that. And you're going to get this. So 2 and a are coming out of here, right? So we should have over here, we should have ut plus a, because we pulled one out, t squared all over 2. Okay. Or v squared equals u squared plus 2a ut plus 1 half a t squared. What does that look like to you? It looks like something that is equal to what? I think it looks like something that's equal to that. So, we can do this. Boom! Something new for you to play with. Right, and of course, sticking with correct nomenclature. This should be S. Sorry about that. Old habits die hard. Okay. All right. And so um, the question here was find V. So V then should be the root of all of this. Right? And in the case of our question, it said that you're at 2 meters per second, you're salmon. So 2 meters per second plus 2 times the acceleration, uh, which was also 2, but it was 2 meters per second squared. And we know that it went a distance of 30 meters. That's uh, so what we got here. 4, 80. That's not right. 80. Smart enough. 20. Uh, oops. And 
we should get. So we get just over 11. Okay, and that should be meters per second. Now let's just check and see if that's right. Um, okay, so we've got meters, meters, meters. So they just stay. Oh no, oh no, no. Sorry, meters squared over here. Right, and we've got seconds negative squared there. Right, so those add up. Um, root that off. That drops to negative one. That drops to one, and we end up in meters per second, and we're happy.